In this example, I'm going to apply the continuity equation to a tank that has an inflow and an in outflow. Um, the problem statement tells us that we have a stream of water that flows into the tank and also we have another stream that drains the tank. You can see that a velocity and area of inflow has been given to us over here and also the flow rate, the volumetric flow rate of outflow has been given to us as well. And you can see the system in the figure that I have provided for you on this slide. What we are going to find is the rates at which water is being stored or removed by the tank. So if you remember from previous slide, I told you that you need to take a couple of steps to solve the problem. Step number one was selection. We are going to make sure that continuity equation is the right for is the right choice for this problem. And since we are going to find the rate at which water being stored or removed, basically we are going to find accumulation. And um, continuity equation is good for finding accumulation. So I'm going to use the simplified format of continuity equation. Why simplified? Because I only have one inlet and one outlet, so it doesn't make sense to use the integrated format. Step number two is sketching. So in this step, you need to sketch control volume. I have already a figure over here. Let me remove these red lines over here. Perfect. I have a figure that shows the shows me the system that I have. I just need to sketch control volume. Control volume, the only characteristic that you need to consider is that control volume and control surfaces should be perpendicular to the velocity vector, to inflow and outflow. So if I want to sketch control volume, I'm going to show it with dashed lines, green dashed lines. So this is my control volume. You can see that my control surface is perpendicular to the outflow. And I need to make sure that my control surface is perpendicular to inflow as well. So I'm going to go like this. And once I'm closer to it, I'm going to basically use like tilted lines and then go down. There we go. So you can see that right now it is perpendicular to both inflow and outflow. Make this a little bit better over here. There we go. Perfect. And this is my control volume. So I sketched control volume, step two. Step number three is analysis. So for this step, I need to write um, continuity equation, the simplified format. And the continuity equation tells you that the amount of accumulation or changes of mass of control volume over time is basically plus summation of mass flow rates of outlet minus summation of mass flow rates for all the inlets it should be equal to zero right this is my um, continuity equation now let's um, one by one go over the term. So this term is basically our accumulation that we are going to find out, right? The other term is summation of mass flow rates that go out of the system. Basically this term over here. You can see that instead of mass flow rate, we have volumetric flow rate, but it is easy because we know how to convert mass flow rate to volumetric flow rate, right? So because we only have one fl uh, outflow, it would be density of water times Q2. Basically this Q over here. Perfect. The other term would be summation of mass flow rate that goes into the system. And if I open up the mass flow rate e equation, it would be rho velocity at point one i'm going to call this point point one and this point point two 
and then area of one, right? Perfect. Now let's calculate the values for this. So we knew that density of water has been given to us 1000 kilograms cubic meters times flow rate is 0 0.003 cubic meters per second. So the value of summation of mass flow rates that go out of the system, if you calculate that, it would be 17.5 and the units would be kilograms per second because this will cancel out. Perfect. Let me put my brackets over here to make it more clear. Awesome. And for inflow, it is simple as well. Again, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meters. That's density. Velocity has been given to us. It's 7 meters per second. An area has been given to us, and they are over here. It is um, 0 0.0025 meters squared so the final value would be um, okay so this one I made a mistake over here this one is 17.5 kilograms per second now the other one that I wrote over here is going to be 3 kilograms per second perfect so these are the right values okay now I'm going to take these two values and put them in this equation, right? And rewrite the equation over here to find accumulation. It's going to be d m sub c v over d t, which gives us the accumulation, will be equal to 17.5, and the units would be kilograms per second minus um, 3 kilograms per second and the final answer the amount of accumulation is 14.5 kilograms per second last step is to validate so I'm gonna validate the units obviously the units for the right hand side of the equation is kilograms per second over here how about for the left hand side of the equation uh, in the numerator, we have mass, which is kilogram, and in the denominator, we have time, which is seconds, so the units are consistent. All right, now let's discuss this. Because this value is positive, because the value of accumulation is positive, it means that the quantity of mass within the control volume is increasing with time, right? So because this is positive, positive the quantity of mass is increasing with time. And this is a simple example on how to apply a continuity equation to a real prob problem to calculate the amount of accumulation of water in a tank. All right, let's take a look at the second example. In this example, we are going to apply the continuity equation to calculate the rate of water rise in a reservoir. Uh, the problem statement tells us that a river discharges into a reservoir, as you can see in the photo, at the rate of 400,000 uh, cubic feet per second, or CFS. And the outflow rate from the reservoir through uh, the flow passage in the dam is 250,000 CFS. If the reservoir surface area is 40 squared miles, what is the rate of rise of water in the reservoir? So we want to know how much would be the rate of velocity of rise of surface of the water behind this reservoir? So first of all, the first step is selection, selection of um, the equation. So we know that we need to use um, continuity equation. And because we only have a couple of inlets and outlets, I'm going to select the simplified format of um, continuity equation. The second step is going to be sketching. Now I'm going to sketch a fixed control volume. So as you know by now, your control volume, your control surfaces should be normal to inlets and outlets. So we have one inlet over here. This is going to be my first inlet. And then this is going to be the surface of my control volume. 
again is going to be perpendicular to the outflow and this the other surface is going to be right below the surface of the water all right now let's see our inlets and outlets we have one inlet over here I am going to call it Q1 we have we don't have another inlet but we have some outlets I'm going to show the outlets uh, one would be over here call it Q2 and there's another outlet too because this is a fixed control volume the surface of water is going to rise so the mass is going to be transferred out of the control volume in this direction with velocity of I'm going to call it V V3 this is the rate of rise that we are going to find and we have the area of this surface 3 which is going to which is given to us it's 40 miles squared so in other words this surface is my this surface that I'm going over again this is my surface 3 this surface is control surface 1 and this surface is control surface 2 Perfect. Now, uh, for analysis, I'm going to write down um, the simplified form of continuity equation, which is d over dt of mass of control volume, changes of mass of control volume over time, um, plus summation of mass flow rates that go out of the system, minus summation of mass um, flow rates that come into the system should be equal to zero perfect now take a look at our control volume the red boundary on this figure the volume does not change right the volume of water inside the control volume does not change even when water goes higher when when the water rises because we have a fixed control volume the mass of control volume does not change because the volume of water inside control volume does not change, right? So we can assume, we can actually say that because the mass inside the control volume does not change over time, we can tell that this term is equal to zero. The mass does not change. So the equation of uh, continuity will be simplified to the outputs should be equal to the summation of input flow rates perfect now let's write down the outputs and inputs and then uh, place them into the equation first of all i'm going to start with uh, the output so summation of mass flow rate that goes out of the system uh, we have two control surfaces in which flow goes out of the system control surfaces two and three for control surface two we have the amount of Q given to us uh, 250,000 so I'm gonna write Rho Q2 this would be the mass flow rate for control surface two plus the other one would be control surface three because the water is going the level of water is going to rise so mass transfers out of control surface 3 as well I'm going to write it in term of rho area 3 times velocity 3 perfect now the other one the other one should be summation of mass flow rates that go into the into the control volume which is only q1 so it would be rho q1 perfect so now if I put these into this equations this goes over here and this goes over here right I can 
write it over, down over here, it would be Q2 plus A3, velocity 3, should be equal to Q1. And because in all of them we had density, I just canceled out density with, with each other. And remember, we are going to find velocity 3. Velocity 3 is also known as velocity of rise or rate of the rise, right? So I can write that velocity 3 or rate of rise is equal to Q1 minus Q2 divided by A3. Now, it is very interesting that you can find out the velocity of the water that rises in a reservoir or in a dam based on input flow rate, output flow rate, and the surface area of your reservoir. If you put all the numbers over here, I'm going to do that very quick. So it's going to be 400,000 minus I'm not going to write the units to save some space over here. 250,000 divided by, it's 40 miles, but I need to convert that to um, basically cubic feet. So the conversion factor, I need to convert that to a squared feet, sorry. And the conversion factor would be 50 to 80. That is squared feet divided by squared miles. Perfect. And if you calculate that, velocity of rise or the rates that the water rises in the reservoir is going to be 1.34 times 10 to the power negative 4 feet per second. You can see that it it's, this number is very small. So every second, the velocity or the surface of water rises 1.34 times 10 to the power negative 4. Or in other words, in every hour, you have almost half a feet of rise. If I convert seconds to hour. There we go. And this would be your final answer.